Hey guys, D to the B here. And yesterday I made a video reviewing the original Puss in Boots movie because yesterday I was going to see its sequel, Puss in Boots The Last Wish. And I thought today I would finally make review and release it. Well, if it's released on the day that I'm recording this, which is Monday, but you never know what could happen. So I might as well get into the plot. There will be major spoilers and let's get into it. So the movie opens up with an introduction from Puss about um, the last star and how there was a legend. Then we transition to um, this whole um, party where it's like all the poor people and Puss in Boots are celebrating. They have milk. They have cool mariachi music. Then this guy comes who turns out to own the house. And they have a big old battle. They fail. Then after the partying, they awaken this um, giant or something like that. And it attacks the house. Then Puss in Boots fights the giant and defeats it. After he defeats it, um, Puss in Boots dies. No, I'm not joking. He actually dies. Because during their fight, um, the giant got knocked out by a bell, which of course, the bell fell on top of him. Wow, that is a clear Coco reference. Probably not, but I just wanted to throw that out there. And of course, we go to the hospital and the doctor, who is also the dentist and other things I can't remember... Tells Puss in Boots that he is dying. And, of course, we get a cameo in the death sequence sequences. The form of Jinji, which it was very nice seeing Jinji again. It has been so long since we saw that character. I think the last time we saw him was the last Shrek movie. Which, the future of Shrek, I'll get into later in the video. So, after we see all the deaths, we find out that Puss in Boots is on his last life. The doctor recommends him retiring, but Puss, being Puss, decides to completely ignore that until he has a run-in with a bounty hunter, which is this wolf guy. And I'm going to get into why I'm going to make this claim, but he is the best DreamWorks villain in history. I don't know why, it's just, he is. And a lot of people would agree with me on that. There was just something about him that made him the best villain of the whole DreamWorks films ever. Like, I don't know how a modern DreamWorks film managed to pull this off, but we have a really good DreamWorks villain in this modern time of films. I'm looking at you, Zerk from Lightyear. You sucked. Anyway, let's continue on. After Puss in Boots runs into the bounty hunter, he gets himself injured and he retreats. And Puss decides to take the doctor's advice and retire, which it takes him a while to um, blend in with the other cats. And then we transition and meet some of the villains of the movie. In the form of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now this is a bit of a retcon. And this has not been the first time Shrek has broke its own continuity before. Let me explain. No one that I'm aware of is talking about this. Because Goldilocks was never in Shrek. Or any of its sequels that I'm aware of. But do you know who was? The Three Bears. Yes, the Three Bears were in the original movie. And they were way different from what they were in this one. Of course, a detail that was pointed out I never noticed as a child or an adult. Apparently, the mama bear was turned into a bear rug. No, I'm not joking. Here is an actual photo from the movie itself. Someone pointed that out on YouTube, and I'm like, wait, what? 
what the heck? Anyway, continuing on. I wanted to throw that out there because this is a little bit of a retcon. If you're wondering, or if you don't remember the last retcon Shrek created, in the third film, um, Shrek the Third, in that film, um, Rumpelstiltskin made a cameo, but in the fourth film, Rumpelstiltskin was the villain, but he had a complete design change. Yeah, it's been done before. I just wanted to throw that out there just in case if no one remembered. Granted, that doesn't mean I hate the three bears in this movie. I actually kind of like them. They're actually kind of funny, <laughs> to be honest. And, of course, um, Goldilocks and the three bears are looking for Puss in Boots. And they track him down in the house he's in and retired in. We also meet this dog who has no name and they crash through the windows, um, Goldilocks and the three bears, and they try interrogating the lady to find Puss in Boots, but she has no idea what they're talking about. So they put her in a piano to interrogate her and Mama Bear is going through the cat's um, seeing if she can find Puss in Boots and also before that... Baby Bear was attacked by a bunch of cats, which was actually kind of funny. So then after the three bears and Goldilocks leave, Puss in Boots digs up his stuff and is ready for his mission to find the star so he can wish for more lives and get his old groove back. And Puss tries going on the mission on his own, but the nameless dog follows him and since Puss no longer has his original sword, um, the nameless dog gives him a stick as a sword. Puss goes in by himself to grab the map to the star, which then we meet our next villain, Jack Horner, which I did some research. Apparently he's a nursery rhyme. And this appears to be the only information I can find about this um, nursery rhyme character. But he is our next villain. And he is a businessman of um, plum pies. And he has the map to the star, which Puss tries taking. But then we get to see an old familiar friend... In the last Puss in Boots movie, Kitty Softpaws. And they appear to be looking for the same thing, which is the map. Which, eventually, they get caught. And then Goldilocks and the three bears show up. They have a whole dispute. Um, the cats end up getting the map and escape. And the three bears try following them. And um, Jack Horner is gathering a bunch of mystical items he has in his collection, which includes a phoenix, which I personally think that's a Harry Potter reference, since Universal does own the rights to Harry Potter. Well, the films, not the books. And at some point before he grabs all the mystical items, we also find out his... Tragic backstory, quote unquote, that um, his career was kind of ruined by a cameo, another cameo of the form of Pinocchio, which this scene is hilarious. I wish I could show this, but unfortunately, since the movie is not on DVD, I unfortunately can't show you the clip, but it's hilarious. But yeah, he's basically doing his regular routine, which is sticking a plum in a uh, his thumb in a plum pie and pulls it out and then people are like hey look a magic puppet <laughs> and it's just Pinocchio just dancing <laughs> it was a hilarious cameo and I could see why people would definitely find that more amusing than this uh, weird boy pulling out a plum with his thumb lame <laughs> anyway continuing on um Puss, the dog, and Kitty Softpaws 
eventually make it into the forest or I forget what the forest is called. And whoever touches the map, the map just changes their obstacles by their soul. Like Puss had a bad one, Kitty Softpaws had a bad one, and then um the nameless dog gets the normal peaceful forest, which is pretty cool. It's actually quite colorful for the name. I think it's like the Forest of Terror or something like that. I can't remember. Unfortunately, it's out of my memory. Anyway, the three bears then show up. The cats are on their way. They get passed through these flowers. And we also find out the tragic backstory of the nameless dog. Which it turns out, even though he was putting it in a positive way because he has no idea what happened. The pe- previous people who had him um, tried getting rid of him multiple times. And he quoted it as hide and seek. And the last attempt to quote unquote get rid of the dog slash hide and seek in his perspective was throwing a rock in a sock putting the dog in there and drowning it I'm like wow that just got dark and even the characters know it's dark like Puss and Kitty Softpaw's reaction is just spot on to how I was feeling when I heard that I'm like what the heck That just got dark. Anyway, continuing on, they go further into the map. And then as um, Jack um, Horner gets there by the flowers, which, of course, the flowers only attack someone if someone tries attacking them back. And they can only get through by sniffing the flowers. Um, Jack Horner loses a bunch of men to the flowers. And we get a cameo from a character that hasn't really been in Shrek, but kind of has at the same time, I will explain. And Jack thinks it's a cricket. I mean, a, a magical locust, but then it turns out to be Um, The DreamWorks version of Jiminy Cricket. Now, technically, there has been a Jiminy Cricket before. In the spinoff short, I think I just searched, Scared Shrekless. Jiminy Cricket was mentioned in a horror story where Jiminy was telling um, Pinocchio to do those horrible things where Pinocchio eventually steps on him and kills him. But technically, that could be considered non-canon, like the adaptation of him. But it's not the official um, Jiminy Cricket in that universe. And we get the funniest thing with Jiminy Cricket. Because as I mentioned, um, Jack thought he was a locust. And he's like, I'm not a locust. I'm... A cricket. I'm your conscious. And Jimmy is trying to have um, Jack Horner do the right thing. But every single time he is unsuccessful and he witnesses this horrible person and what he's doing. Like, one of the things um, Horner packed was a phoenix. And he just uses the phoenix as a flamethrower. I found that hilarious. I'm like, hey, something creative. I'll give you credit. (laughs) And it gets worse as it kept going, but it was hilarious. Anyway, um, they continue on with the tale. Um, Eventually, Jack Horner gets more of his men killed, which, of course, Jiminy stands up to him and... This whole funny moment, unfortunately I can't play this clip either, because the film's not out yet. Like, Jiminy, after finding out Horner's plan is, he's going to use the wish to um, make sure he's the only one can use the whole magic of the world. And he's like, um, this is horrible. Your wish is horrible. You're horrible. 
you're an irredeemable monster. <laughs> He's just like, no, what took you so long, idiot? Push him off. It's hilarious. And then we continue on with the rest of the movie. And um, at one point, Puss meets his past lives. And we find out the bounty hunter that is after Puss in Boots is actually Death himself. Now, I thought this was going to be the big bad wolf or the bad wolf. or I forget what it's called. That one fairy tale, uh, fairy tale with Red, um, Red, uh, um, what was her name? She was literally the main character of Hoodwinked here. Uh, no, wait. Um, Liddy, uh, Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah, I remember now. Um, yeah, because there was already a character that, but nope, this seems to be his own original character and he is death. I don't know. He is the best DreamWorks villain in history. I can't describe why. Like, it's his voice, his, his attitude, his little whistle, and how he's determined to get pussed. It just makes him such a good character. And... Uh, one person I watched a review on said he wouldn't mind a spinoff of this guy, and I honestly couldn't blame him. We also find out what Goldilocks wants with the last wish, or the the star, and she wants an actual family because she was an orphan that was adopted by bears. And this scene was a lot to take when she basically told the bears she doesn't love them and... She wants a real family and not bears. I, it surprised me that I almost cried to that. And then, of course, we get to the end. And it's the final battle. At some point, the map gets stolen. Then the cats steal it back. We even get a gag of the um, story of the Goldilocks and the three bears. Where, with the porridge, it's like, ah, too hot. Ah, too cold. Uh, just right. We got that joke. That was actually kind of funny. And then, as I was continuing on, we get to the final battle where it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears and, um, Horner. And they're just facing off each other. Goldilocks has the map to, um, get the wish, but she chooses to save, um, Baby Bear instead and accept that this is the family that she wants. Then, um, Puss has the wish that he tries giving it to, um, Kitty Softpaws because he realizes, um, he doesn't want the extra lives anymore. He wants one life and he wants to be happy. Show he is a changed being. And then we get death. They have a final battle, which death retreats because... Um, Death only wanted to face him because he, um, because Puss viewed himself as immortal and it was great character development. I really liked it. And then the film ends with Jack Horner trying to get the map, but Jiminy Cricket snatches a piece and sets it on fire and sets the whole map on fire, which causes the star get destroyed and... Kitty Soft Paws, Puss in Boots, and um, the dog now known as Burrito live happily ever after. And we get a far, far away cameo. And that's the end of the movie. And that is clearly a teaser for Shrek 5. And originally I was skeptical about Shrek 5. But now seeing this movie, I have a little glimmer of hope that it could be good. And I am hoping it is. Because this movie was definitely worth it. Elton C said he wouldn't mind another Puss in Boots movie, which I completely agree with. And usually when a film takes way too long to come out from the original, like, for example, Incredibles 2, this one definitely felt like it was worth it. I don't know why, because, like, Incredibles 2, even though I didn't hate the film, it just felt, um, it felt like it took too long, like... It could have been done a lot sooner, and the hype kind of went down for me. Like, I find it a fine film, but it ain't great. Kind of the same thing with Shrek... I mean, not Shrek 4, um... 
Toy Story 4. Granted, there has been some more hate for that movie, which some things I can completely understand. I might have to watch it again, but I don't think my opinion's really going to change. I thought Toy Story 4 was meh at best. But anyway, continuing on. Yeah, this movie was definitely worth it. It is the best way to end off 2022. I kept forgetting this film came out last year. And yeah, it was a good way to end it. Of course, I'm going to have to find my first movie that starts off this year. My list is very low already, so yeah, don't expect that much. Anyway, this film is a clear 10 out of 10, just like the first one. And if you want to see my review of the first Puss in Boots movie, I will leave it at the end of the video. What do you think of the movie? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Tell me in the comments. And if you liked today's video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like my content or want to see more of my content. With that out of the way, have a nice day, guys. And the video will be here. Bye, guys.